I have one right over here? Yeah, this way. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Maybe get a couple more. All right. We'll just take some while I'm talking. How's everybody doing? Good. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, you know, this is this is exciting for me. It's it's my fourth book. I can't can't believe it. You know, I, I never really even sat out to be a writer. Really, what happened? Letters to a Young Brother came first, and I really wrote that book because a lot of uh, young brothers were reaching out to me and, and, and asking me certain questions, and I, I couldn't keep up with all the emails. I was, I was exchanging emails, sometimes 400, 500 a week, and I couldn't keep up, so I decided to kind of put what they were talking about in buckets, and then it's just evolved from there. And this book uh, is, is my most ambitious book to date. Uh, because it speaks to, I think, a, a huge issue uh, that's going on right now. And, and a lot of times I do, before my signings, I do talks. But this time I'm not going to do that so much. I want to read from the prologue. Um, and then just open it up to Q&A before we do the signing. Uh, this book is called The Wealth Cure, Putting Money in Its Place. The first quote I put in the book there's a quote by Mark Kurlansky from a, from a, a book called Salt. And, he, and Mark said, the search for love and the search for wealth are always the two best stories. But while a love story is timeless, the story of a quest for wealth, given enough time, will always seem like a vain pursuit of a mirage. I thought that was a nice quote because my last book was about relationships and love. And this book is about money. And Mark Kurlansky's quote is saying that, you know what? You keep chasing money, and you'll always be chasing money. And that's part of the theme of this book. Prologue. Putting money in its place. Quote, the most creative people on the planet are those who frame the biggest, hardest questions and then gather the resources necessary to find the answers. Uh, Rob Brezhne, he's an American astrologer. He has a, he has a book out, a, a, a book that I really love called Pronoia, The Antidote to Paranoia. And a uh, very interesting book. It's, it's kind of scatterbrained. It's all over the place. But it's got some interesting ideas, some creative ideas. Uh, you pick up the book, it's a little crazy. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty cool book. And uh, I, I put that quote in there because I think that talking about money, it's, it's, a, it's one of the biggest, hardest questions. Uh, because Money is the issue. Money is what is killing people. There's blood on money. When we talk about diamonds, it's because of money. We talk about the millions of people that have been killed over oil. We're talking about money. We talk about the wars that have been fought. It's over money. Money is a big, hard question. We're talking about paying our bills or feeding our family. We're talking about money. Wealth. To most of us, this doesn't seem like something we need to be cured of, right? In fact, most people would love to get infected with a wealth virus. I'm not suggesting that wealth is a sickness. Rather, I believe that we as a culture and as individuals must re-examine, alter, and then cure what has become a debilitating relationship with money and wealth. Our society is addicted to debt. Now, I wrote that before the recent debt crisis. I'll put you in for that. And exacerbating that... That problem, we live in a culture that associates material objects bling with success. Those two factors have led us to overvalue money. Now think about that idea, overvalue money. We associate value with money or paying for goods and services, but are we actually overvaluing currency? Currency was created for what? Easy exchange to get out of the barter system. The barter system was if you had some chickens, I had some potatoes, I wanted chickens, I bartered with you some potatoes for some chickens. But that got to be a hassle because you had to carry around a lot of potatoes. <laughs> so why don't we just come up with an easy system, a currency of money, to be able to barter chickens and potatoes equally, correct? It's easier to carry around money. So where did we start to overvalue that system of exchange? There's just a simple system of exchange. So, so much so that in many ways we chase paper just as intently as substance addicts chase their next fix. Our relationship with money borders upon addiction and so many of the problems we see today individually and collectively are the result of this craving. We make irrational and often destructive choices because we have given money and its pursuit 
too much value. I thought I understood the meaning of wealth. When I was a kid, I saw a Mad Magazine cartoon of a man holding a sign that said, money is the root of all evil, and right behind him stood another man holding a, an almost identical sign uh, with just a slight adjustment and warning and a drastic adjustment and message, the lack of money is the root of all evil. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that money is not important. Of course it is, let's be real. We needed to acquire goods and services. It's the compensation we receive for our labor and ingenuity. Money also enables us to take care of loved ones, be charitable with the less fortunate, invest in people, or simply throw crazy fun parties. It's easy to see how many of us came to believe that money equals happiness, but money is not wealth. This is a book about money and wellness. I believe that money plus wellness equals wealth. That's kind of the substance of this book. This idea that money plus wellness equals wealth. And attempting to extract money from wealth. And I think our pursuit as individuals must be a pursuit for wealth, true wealth. Yet we confuse that with a pursuit for money. In early 2010, I began, I began writing a book about money and financial literacy. And so many people I met were struggling with issues related to their personal finances I thought would be a valuable topic to explore. Oftentimes I choose to write about issues that I personally want and need to understand better. I never put myself out as an expert, y'all. I mean, if you've read my books, you know that. I'm just a man on a journey trying to figure it out myself. That's what the conversation was about. I have relationship issues, try to figure it out. <laughs> Money issues, try to figure those out, okay? But what started out as a very straightforward book about budgeting, savings, and debt evolved as a result of a life-changing experience in July of 2010. As so often happens when you start out on one life path, unforeseen events affect the route you end up taking. Sometimes you get a shortcut, other times a, a detour that takes you way, way out of your way. For me, the unexpected came in the form of a parallel path, one that brought me to the same point but that offered unexpected scenery in many ways changed the way I looked at life around me. A sudden and unexpected health crisis became the background against the book I was writing about money. And as I thought about the physical challenges I faced and how in many ways they parallel the challenges we all face when it comes to our financial health, I realized that the roadmap to physical well-being was much like the one to financial well-being from health cure to wealth cure. Health and healing concerns come naturally to me, and it may be genetics, since so many of my family members on both sides are deeply rooted in the medical fields. On my father's side, I count at least six Harper healers. My grandfather, Harry Harper, a general practitioner who focused on obstetrics. His two brothers, also general practice physicians. Another brother who was a dentist. My dad, Harry D. Harper, Jr.